Hey Finksters, today we will be learning how to count the number of words in a given string. So let's try to understand this question first. So to understand it, let's have a look at a few examples. So let's say that you have a given string stored within the variable sentence. Now I purposely chose this variable as sentence because this makes more sense and it will help us to break down the question in a more understandable way. So let's have a look at the first input or the first example wherein we have this sentence Pinkster helps you to master Python. Now you simply have find a way to count the number of words in this line or in this sentence. So if we manually count it then it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then 6. Hence the number of words or the output should be 6. Now let's have a look at a multi-line string. So this is a random multi-line string wherein you can see that we have some random text and if you manually count it, you'll find that the number of words in this string is 19. Now please note that this word right here is a single word and after that we have the new line character or we move on to a new line and this is the next word in the new line. So this is how a multi-line string looks like. Now let's have a look at an, another example. And in this example, as you can see, that sentence is an empty string. So it has no words present within it. Now this should not have been 19. The number of words in this case should have been 0. I'll rectify it. But the output in this case should be 0. Since this string contains 0 words. So the output in this case should be 0. Now please note that this should not be 19. I'm repeating this once again. This should be 0. So let us dive into the different methods that will help us to solve this problem. Now the first and the easiest way to solve this question is to use the split method along with the len method. Both of these are built in methods in Python and they perform specific tasks. So let us dive into the code and let's find out how we can use these methods to solve the problem. So this is the given string. Now we will have a look at each test case or at each input and check if a particular approach works properly on each example or not. But for now, let's say that this is the given sentence and we have to find the number of words in this sentence. So as I mentioned, we will be using the split method and the len method. So what the split method does is it splits a given string into different substrings at a provided separator and stores these substrings into a list. By default, that is if you do not specify a particular separator within the split method, it will consider a white space as the separator. So if you split this sentence using the split method, then it will split this entire line into number of substrings such that the separator will be a white space, which is a space in this case. So as you can see that between each substring or between each word, we have a space. So that is going to serve as the separator in this case. So let's go ahead and use the split method upon this sentence and let's find out the kind of output that we have. So let's print sentence dot split. Now let's execute this piece of code to find out the output. There we go. As you can see, that we have a list which consists of the substring from the given sentence or from the given string. So this also means that we have successfully separated each word in the given string and stored them in a list. Now all that remains to be done is to count the number of words present in this list. And you can do that simply by finding the length of the list. So when you find the length of this list, it will return number of items present within this list. So this is the list and all that needs to be done is to find its length and we can do that with the help of the built-in Python method known as len. So within len, we pass this list and that's it. So this will help us to yield the output that we want. Let's execute this piece of code and let's find out if it gives us the output that we want. And there we go. So the output is 6 and 6 is exactly the output that we needed. Let's go ahead and let's copy the test cases and let's use them one by one within sentence to find out if this works on the other test cases or not. So these were the test cases. 
let's copy this test case let's paste it here okay now let's go ahead and execute this code and let's find out the output and there we go it says that this string has 19 words and let's check the expected output and there we go the expected output was also 19. now let's use an empty string so let's say that this string sentence has no words present within it so we have an empty string now let's execute our code and there we go so our code says that it has zero words present within it and that is exactly what we expected so this is how you can use a very simple single line of code to solve the question there's another very simple method of solving this question with the help of the regex library so let's go ahead and visualize the method so let's import the regex library so import re so that helps us to import the regex library now we will be using find all method from the regex library so let's learn a bit about the find all method so the find all method is used to determine the number of matches of a given pattern in a string so we will be using this method to solve the question such that we will use a certain pattern to find all the words present within the given string so let's say that this is the given string and now we will be using the find all method from the regex library find out the number of words present within this list so you have to use re dot find all and now you have to pass the pattern which you want to search within the string and the pattern that we want to search within this string is a word so this is the pattern that will help you to find all the words present in the given string you also have to pass second parameter which is the string itself and the string is contained within the variable sentence so we pass sentence as the second parameter now let's go ahead and execute this to find out what this returns and there we go as you can see that we now have a list containing all the words present within the given string so all that remains to be done now is to find the length of this list which will help us to yield the output so let's do that with the help of the len method and let's pass this list to the len method after that okay so we have the len method and then this find all method helps us to get a list consisting of all the words present in the given sentence and as soon as we pass this list to the len method it returns the length of the list which also represents the number of words present in the given string so let's execute this code once again and let's find out the output and there we go six is what we have and this is the expected output so let's run this code on the other test cases as well so let's copy this string instead of this string let's use this multi-line string that we have let's paste it okay now let's go ahead and execute this code once again and the expected output is 19 so let's see if we have 19 as the output or not and there we go so we have 19 as the output so this means this code is working on multi-line strings as well finally let's go ahead and create an empty string okay now the output should be zero so let's see if the output is zero or not and there we go so we have zero as the output so this means you can definitely use this piece of code to solve this problem now let's dive into another way of solving this question so the idea here is to find the number of words in the given string with the help of a counter variable and a for loop so let's initialize our counter variable and let's say that the counter variable is word and let's say that initially it is zero now let's use a for loop which will help us to iterate across all the characters present in the given string so let's say that this is the given string and now we will be using the for loop to iterate across all the characters of this string so let's use for i in sentence so this helps us to iterate across all the characters in the given string now let's move inside the for loop now to understand further let's use an example let's say that we have a string which has these three words now if you look closely then you'll find that this string has three words separated by two spaces that means we have a space after each word so we can also say that if this string 
has n spaces, then this string will have n plus 1 words. So in this case, n represents 2 since we have 2 spaces, 1 and 2. So the number of words will be n plus 1, which is 3. Now, if this is clear, then we can move ahead with our code. Now we will find the number of occurrences of spaces within the given string. And it should be quite clear now why we are doing that. But a point to be noted here is that the string can also be a multi-line string or instead of spaces, it can also have tabs within the words. So we also have to take into account those characters. So we can check that with the help of an if statement. So if i is equal to a space or if i is equal to a tab or if i is equal to a new line character. And you'll soon find the usage of this condition when we move into the test case wherein we have a multi-line string. So as soon as we encounter any of these characters, we go ahead and increment the value of our counter variable by one. So that means we increment the value of word by one. Well, word helps us to count the number of spaces in this case or in this example. And once we have counted all the spaces, our next task is to go ahead and check if the given string is empty or not. So you can do that with the help of another if statement. Let's come out of the loop and let's check if sentence is empty or not. If it is empty, then we will simply print zero because in that case, the string will not have any words present within it. Otherwise, we simply go ahead and print word plus one. And I hope you understand why we are using word plus one. This is because word gives us the number of spaces in this string. However, the number of words in this string will be number of spaces plus one, which we saw previously. So let's have a look at that in this example as well. So let's say that the number of words in this string is six. So now let's count the number of spaces. This is the first space. Then this is the second space. This is the third space character. This is the fourth space character. And this is the fifth space character. So that means we have five space characters and six words. Hence, the number of words will be number of spaces plus one. And that's what we are simply returning as the output. Now let's execute this code to find out if this works or not. And there we go. As you can see that we have six as the output and that is exactly what we expected. Now let's say that we have an empty string. So there we go. And now let's find the length of the string. And there we go. Zero is the output and this is what we expected. Now let's move on to the multi-line string that we had. So this was the multi-line string. Let's use it. Okay. Now let's execute this code and let's find out if the answer is 19 or not. So let's execute this. And there we go. We have 19 as the output. Hence, this piece of code works. Well, there's two more ways which use the same logic. So let's have a look at those approaches as well. So in the next approach, we are going to use count method, which is a built-in method in Python that counts the number of occurrences of a substring within a given string. So let's remove this piece of code as we do not need it in this case. Now let's use the count method to individually find out the number of spaces present within this given string. Then we will also find out number of new line characters present within this given string. So let's do that with the help of the count method. Okay, so we have three variables. The first stores the number of spaces in the given string. So we are simply using the given string dot the count method and then we are passing a space within the count method to count the number of spaces within the given string. Similarly, we are storing the number of tab characters present within this given string. And we are also storing the number of new line characters in this given string. Now we have to find the sum of all these values. So let's go ahead and do that. Spaces plus tabs plus new lines. Okay. 
But as we learned in the previous approach that the number of words that will actually be present in the given string will always be one more than the number of spaces or number of new line characters present in the given string. So this will be plus one. Then we simply check if the given string is empty or not. If it is empty, then we simply return zero. Otherwise, if it is not empty, then we return the value calculated within our counter variable word. So let's execute this code. And I hope that the output should be 19. And there we go. We have 19 words present within this given string. Let's also check the condition for an empty string. And they should be zero. And there we go. We have zero as the output. Let's also check for the simple one line string that we had. So this was the one line string. Let's copy this and the expected output is six. Okay, let's check if we have six as the output or not. Let's execute this. And there we go. We have six as the output. So this is how you can use the count method to solve this problem. Now, instead of using so many lines of code, you can solve this using a single line of code as well, wherein you can implement the same concept, but you can calculate the occurrences of all these characters in a single line of code. So let's find out how we can do that. So if the sentence is empty, then we simply go ahead and return zero as the output. However, if it is not empty, then let's say that we have a variable res and within this, we will store the number of words or let's say that the name of the variable is word itself. And within this, we will store the number of words in the given string. And to do that, you simply need to use the sum method. And within this, we will use an expression which will count the number of occurrences of special characters like spaces, tabs, and new line characters. So we will simply add one for every occurrence of a special character. So this is our context variable such that special character is present in the given string, which is sentence. And now let's define the special character, which is a space tab or a new line character. So we can define that with the help of an inline if statement. So if special underscore character in space a tab or a new line character. So this single line of code helps us to compute the number of spaces, number of new line characters and the number of tabs present within the given string and then find their sum. And then we simply go ahead and return that sum plus one as the output as we already learned that if there are n spaces, then there will be n plus one words in the given string. So let's execute this code. And there we go. We have six as the output and this is what we expected. Now let's say that we have an empty string. So let's execute this. And there we go. We have zero as the output and this is what we expected. And finally, let's say that we have a multi line string. So let's use the multi line string here. So this was our multi line string. Let's copy it. Let's paste it. Now let's check if the output is 19 or not. So let's see. And there we go. We have 19 as the output and this is what we expected. So this is how you can use this piece of code to solve the given question. Frankly speaking, the best way to solve this question is the first approach that we learned wherein we simply splitted the given string and stored each word in a list. And then we found out the length of that list, which helped us to get the output. And then another appropriate approach was to use the regex library. However, if you are not very comfortable with the regex library, then you can definitely use the first method to solve this problem. So if someone asks you what's the most Pythonic way of solving this question, then please rely on the first solution that we saw in this video. However, you should also be aware of different ways of solving a given question. And that is why I explained you numerous ways of solving this question. With that, we come to the end of this video. I hope this helped you. Thank you.